to everybody. Good morning. It's a beautiful day. Oh, it's so beautiful out here. Beautiful, warm, clear day here in Birmingham. And I pray that it's wonderful where you are as well. Thank God for his grace and mercy. Y'all, I'm going to tell you something. The era of grace and mercy is about to come to an a, a end. We are coming to the concluding part, the benediction of the era of grace and mercy. You know, I was, you know, looking at the news and looking at all of the things that's going on, you know, especially in America and comparing those things to what the Bible says, what Jesus said in Matthew 24 would be happening as a precursor to his coming. And I, I literally shake my head in my spirit. And I said, Lord, what more can we do? What, what more? can we do to transgress against your will? What more can we do to destroy the institutions that you have created at the very beginning of time? What more can we do to operate out of the order that you have set for the world? What more can we do to blaspheme and discredit and mutilate the gospel? I said, Lord, what else? What is left for us to do? I mean, Right now, every sin imaginable is acceptable. They even trying to accept pedophilia, bestiality. Y'all, uh, what what is left? And I and I waited because I wanted God to answer me. I waited, and the Bible remind and the Lord reminded me of what the Bible said in that same chapter where Jesus was talking in Matthew twenty four. When you see all these things happening. Right before Jesus come back, all of this stuff is happening. But something else happens major before Jesus comes back on the scene. The Antichrist himself makes his physical debut. And he comes and he wreaks havoc on the earth in the name of peace and safety. And y'all, we have been hearing that praise for the last couple of years, y'all. I tell you what, whether the Antichrist is a single person, or whether it's a system, I don't know. But one thing I do know, y'all, there's not much left we can do. There's not much left to be done, as the Bible says, before Jesus comes back. Y'all, and we got to make sure that we stop accepting these ideologies and the world's paradigms that if it doesn't affect me, I don't want to talk about it. Well... You know, we shouldn't be talking about people. We shouldn't be talking about sin. I mean, if we don't acknowledge it, how are we going to defend ourselves against it? If we don't talk about it and discuss it, and see, that's what's wrong with the church right now. We don't want to talk about this transgender thing because nobody want to talk about Obama. Just like nobody want to talk about the adultery ep epidemic in the church. Nobody want to talk about homosexuality, especially rampant in our musicians. Nobody want to talk about the divorce rate that's in our churches. And Jesus said that divorce wasn't even, even established from the beginning. But because of our hard head and our hard hearts, nobody want to talk about the lying and the stealing and the deceit and the agendas and the politics. We don't want to talk about it. And because as long as we don't see it, it's okay. Y'all, it is not okay. It is not okay. It's not okay. The only way to effectively prepare ourselves for the last battle that's getting ready to come, y'all, we got to acknowledge what the Bible says is going on now. So we need to get out of all of our feelings and get in the spirit of God and understand that what we are seeing is God written. It was written a long time ago. And if we can just say, Lord, we see what you're saying and we're going to stand up against it. And I'm going to tell you, the time is getting so bad now. You know, this and it starts with school. It starts with school because they want to breed our children. They want to breed an evil generation. They're not start, start with grown people. They want to start a generation of wicked, you know, religious-less, spiritual-less people. But we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to acknowledge it because this, that, and the other. Well, guess what? What you don't talk about will hurt you. What we haven't been dealing with in the church has been hurting us for so long. And, y'all, we are at the end of it all. And we still don't want to talk about it. We still don't want to address it. 
Y'all, I'm telling you, if we don't address it now, it's going to be addressed when we stand before God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit in the day of judgment. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I am not willing, I'm not willing to stand before God and God said, I have given you an opportunity to stand up for me and you did. I'm not that willing. I'm not that willing to do that. We as a body of Christ, y'all, because we're going to have to choose. We're going to have to choose between our jobs and God after a while. We're going to have to choose before between our children's education and God after a while. We're going to have to choose between our religious beliefs and our, our traditions and God after a while. Y'all, yeah, we're going to have to choose. And the Bible strictly says, if you are a friend of this world, you embrace the things of this world, you embrace the government of the world, you embrace the leader of the world, you embrace the religion of the world, you are an enemy of God. That's what the Bible says. And so many of us are so, you know, in the church and, and we're operating and we're in ministry, but we are God's enemy because we don't want to stand up for what's right. We don't want to talk about what's holy. We don't want to cry out against those things that are wrong. If the prophets of old, if Elijah and Elisha and 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 and, and Ezekiel and Jeremiah and, and, and Hag, I mean Malachi, if all of those men, if, if Deborah and, and Esther and Ruth, if, if, if Mary Magdalene and, and, and Peter and Paul and John were here, yeah, they would be making noise. But we want to be quiet. We want to be quiet. Y'all, I, I, I worry. I worry about the body of Christ. I worry about where we're going. I worry about our spiritual state. I worry that we got a form of godliness and we don't have any power. That's why we're not seeing no restoration. That's why we're not seeing miracles. That's why we're not seeing the healing. Y'all, because God is right and everything is wrong. And anytime we try to go about things, not doing it God's way, even if it's a hair off, it's, going, it's not going to work. Y'all, we have to stand up. Y'all, we have to stand up. And I'm going to tell you something. God has given us and equipped us with everything we need to make the noise we need to make. But nobody, nobody want to sacrifice. Y'all, I'm telling you, standing up for God is going to mean sacrifice. We don't want to sacrifice anything anymore. And God sacrificed his own son for us. But we don't want to sacrifice anything. We don't want to sacrifice our, our, our our religious status or or our, our friendships or we don't want to sacrifice anything. We don't want to sacrifice being light. But God sacrificed it all for us. We don't want to talk about it because it's the president. So what? If you look all through the Bible, I mean history is written where you have examples of evil kings. And we see what happened to those evil kings and those evil people. But we don't want to talk about it. We want to talk about everything that's going on, and we see it, and we don't talk about it. And when we don't talk about it, we become guilty partakers. Are we that willing to be partakers? With the world, y'all, too many of us love the world. You, we lying, saying we love the Lord, and we don't. We love the world. We love the things of the world. Because if we love God, y'all, it will move us to do something. It will move us to speak out. It will move us. It will move us to go into the streets and to the hedges and the highways like God told us to. And tell this world that there's a better way. That the way of, of sin is death. But God came to give us life. And there's life in holiness. There's life in righteousness. There's life in righteousness and godliness. But we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. They, I don't know, Lord. I don't know. I'll tell you what. I'm not going to be quiet. I'm not going to be quiet. I don't care who the president is. I don't care who the world leader is. I don't care who the governor is. I don't care what the leader is. We'll pray for them, but y'all, sin is sin. Wrong is wrong. And if you don't want to talk about it, you become a guilty partaker. If you don't want to disagree with it, you become guilty. And the Bible says that. 
Y'all, we have to stand up. Y'all, it's about to come to an end. It's about to come to a straight end. And y'all, a lot of us are going to be held accountable because we had the means to stand up for what is right. And we did it. God is going to ask us about all of this. Did you stand up? Did you tell them in love that that's not the way to live? Did you tell them that I came to give them abundant life? Did you tell them that the wages of sin is death? Did you even go into the streets and try to invite somebody to church? We think all of this other stuff matter, y'all. Obedience to God is what is going to matter. Nothing else. And I'm going to tell you what. A lot of us need to check our friendships, make sure that we're not friends with, with the world. A lot of us talk a good game. A lot of us dress a good game. We appear to be saved. We're just like those transgender people in the spirit. We, we, we are sinners at heart, and we, we appear to be saved. We ain't saved. We ain't righteous. We ain't living holy. We, we ain't no better than those people. Not if we ain't trying for real. And some of us are just saying that we have a relationship with God, and we're transgenders in the spirit. We say we got the spirit of God, and we and the, and the devil is our own father because he said the deeds of your father you will do, and we ain't doing the will of God. So if we're not doing the will of God, whose will are we doing? Y'all, we're gonna be held accountable. It ain't no time to be playing no more. It's not time to be playing. It's not we 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 playing. And we worry about stuff that don't even matter. We got a whole world that's right in front of our eyes that's dying. We, it's dying. And we don't even care. Some of us don't even care. We don't want to talk out. And I'm going to tell you something. The truth, it might hurt. It might stay. It run over our toes. It don't make us feel good all the time. But Jesus said that the truth will make you free because he is the spirit of truth. So let's start embracing it. Let's embrace God and his way and his truth. And let's not be ashamed of it. And don't get in your feelings. When somebody says something that is true, if we run over our foot to say amen and get better and grow in grace while we can. Y'all, it's about to come to an end. It's about to come to an end. God help us. God help us. God help us all. I love y'all. Y'all, we need to start standing up because we're going to be forced to choose after a while. You're going to be forced to choose. Choose it now while it's easy. You're going to be forced to choose. And the Bible says... When we get to that point, many people are going to be a part of the falling away because they don't want to choose God over this world. They don't want to choose holiness over the wickedness and, 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 and sin and all this crazy ideas of the world. Choose now while it's easy. Stand up now while it's easy. Then you'll be strong when they look at you in your face and say, well, since you believe that way, you can't have a job. Since you believe that way, we're going to close your church. Since you believe that way, you can't shop in our malls. You can't shop in our malls, and then the, mar the market will be about to make its debut any time. Y'all, we better get ready. We better get ready. All this foolishness, it's time out for that. We, better, we need to make things right with one another. We need to band together in unity and we need to stand up for what is right. And right don't have a name. Right don't have a color. But right got God's name written all over it. And we better stand up for God. Because when we don't, we're his enemy. And we become partakers in the sin of the world. And I'm not willing to do that. And I know you're not either. God bless you. I love you. I didn't mean to hold you so long. I don't know, y'all. We need to do some praying. We need to do some praying, some soul searching. Y'all be blessed in the Lord. Y'all have a great day. Y'all pray for me. I'm going out to give out the flyers and stuff today. So y'all pray for me and my husband. I love you guys. Y'all have a great day.